excited about what God has in store for our service today. We thank you so many of our TLC have already tuned in, our people. And if you're a guest of ours that are tuning in, thank you so much for being with us here Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. As I said, God's got great things in store for us today. And so why don't you do me a favor right now? We can't actually fist bump or we can't high five. We can't do anything like that, but we can do it virtually. So why don't you just give me a good emoji that says how excited you are about being tuned in at TLC at the service today. So give me an emoji in our feed right now. Let us know how excited you are, how enthused you are, how ready you are to hear the word of God and then to worship him. We know that today is going to be a great day. So we love you. We miss you so, so, so much. But we only got just a little bit longer and we can get back together and we can worship together and we can love on each other and we can, you know, maybe hug each other a little bit and, you know, have a good time with that. And so, again, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. Today's going to be a great, great Dexter has a word. We're starting our I Declare series today and our I Declare is going to be a tremendous series for the month of May. We're going to declare over our lives and speak the word of God over our lives, and we're going to see the difference that that's going to make in our in every avenue of our lives. And so today, that's going to start. Now, tomorrow, we're supposed to get the rest of our things in, our clickers, for our TLC challenge that we're going to do for the month of May. And we're going to have bags together, and in these bags, we're going to have these clickers. With these clickers, what we're going to do is we're going to ask that we're going to give you a list of declarations that you can speak over you and your family. And every time you declare something over your life pertaining to the Word of God, you're going to click it. And what that does is that keeps a running count of how many times you've declared something over your life. And so at the end of the month, you'll be able to look and see just how many declarations that you've made in your family and then see the difference that that makes in your life and everything that is happening. You're going to see doors open ways being made, healing happening, chains being broken, blessings being poured out. You're going to see so many great things come from us declaring the Word of God over our lives because as I preached Wednesday night, the Word of God always produces fruit. And so everything that we do is going to be great in this month. So hopefully our stuff, shipping's crazy right now. Hoping it's saying it's supposed to be here tomorrow. And we're speaking that we're declaring, we're starting it today, declaring it in Jesus' name that UPS is going to come by here tomorrow early enough where we can get these bags together. And so we're believing that. We're going to have these bags together. And Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll have the gym open and you can come by to the church and pick up a bag. We're going to have your name on it. It would be for each family of the church. And these clickers are going to be for kindergarten age and up. And so if you have a kid in your household that is kindergarten age and up, we're going to have a clicker for them too. And so parents, you can help them declare over their lives and speak the word of God over their lives. And so they'll be involved. We'll have an individual clicker for every person in your family as long as it's kindergarten age and up. So come by the church Tuesday and Wednesday and you can get into the gym and we'll have it there in our little kitchen area in our foyer. And you can go in there and you can get your bags and we can kick off this I Declare series. It's going to be tremendous. And I promise you, it's going to produce fruit in your life because the Word of God always does that. And so today, we're going to be sending out a link uh, for Pastor's Prayer tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, Monday night Zoom meeting, Monday night Zoom prayer meeting with Pastor. We had a great one last Thursday. I had many of you tuned in with us and got to pray and got to talk to each other, and it, it was just a tremendous time. And so today we're going to be sending out a link through our church text that you can log on and be on Pastor's Prayer Zoom meeting tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Now Tuesday, Miss Angie has our candid conversations. It's going, it went well this past Friday at noon this week. We're going to have it Tuesday at noon, and it's going to be a great thing. And just, just heads up, guys, it's not just for women only. It can be for anybody. I know it was the majority of just women tuned in this last one. But it's for anybody that wants to get on and have talk about the word of the Lord. I think they talked about Colossians, the last one. And so this is going to be a fun time. So if you don't have Zoom, go download Zoom on your phone, and it'll be a great, great time. Remember, this Wednesday night, we have church, but church is going to be at 7. We got the, the 
my mind just went. The curfew, thank you. The curfew is going to be off. And so we'll be back to 7 o'clock Wednesday night services. It's going to be tremendous. And also Tuesday night, we have our kids' church, our kids' church, our life kids. It's going to be at 6 o'clock. It's going to be tremendous. I think Emory and the team is doing a tremendous job with that. And then Thursday night, we will have our online youth service. We will have it at 6 o'clock here at the church, and it's going to be tremendous there. Now, next Sunday is Mother's Day. Mother's Day, and we're going to be celebrating our mothers and so thankful for my mom and our, my grandmother and all the great women and Miss Angie in my life. So we're going to be celebrating all the mothers and just giving them all the honor that they deserve next week. And so we are excited about what God's going to do today. And I want to say again, thank you so much for all those that have been coming and giving, paying tithes and offering and all the times and dropping by the church. And today we're going to be taking up our offering online and through text right now. If you want to give and your tithes and your offering and your general, whatever you want to do. If you want to text, it's the number is 84321, 84321. And then you can put the amount and the type of offering that you want to give, and that will go through there. And also you can go through our church app and click on there and go to online giving, and then you can follow your way through, put all your information in, and it will completely be safe, protected. And like I've been saying in this time, we cannot outgive God. And the pastor says it a lot. It's not a debt that we owe, but a seed that we sow. And so we are thankful that God is with us even in these times. Now today I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask the presence of God just to fill every home, and he's going to minister to where you are right now in your family, and the very thing that is standing in front of you is not the end of you, but it is the beginning, the springboard to what God's going to do in your life, and it starts today because we're declaring that in the name of Jesus, and so we're speaking right now, and we're going to declare healing, we're going to declare faith, we're going to declare victory, we're going to declare blessing, we're going to declare that over you right now. And so if you would, would you stand to your feet with me right now? And we're going to lift our hands, maybe in your home. I want you to lift your hands right now. We're going to pray. And we're going to ask the presence of the Almighty God to fill us right now and to minister to wherever we are. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for all that you have done. You alone are worthy of every single word of worship and every single word of praise because, God, there is no one that can compare because there is no one like you in heaven, no on earth. Lord, we can search, but we will never find none that is like you, my Jesus. So I speak over every home that is tuned in this morning, and I declare healing in the name of Jesus. I declare victory in the name of Jesus. I declare every high thing that has exalted itself against you must come down in the name of Jesus. I declare right now blessing and victory in the name of Jesus. For you are our joy. You are our peace. You are our strength. And that's never ending. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you minister to every family right where they are, Lord God. Let them feel the tangible presence of the Holy Ghost in their rooms right now, Lord God. I speak the chains and I command them to be broken. I speak the strongholds and tell them they must come down. We are declaring the word of the Lord over our families, over our church, over our country. that you would just move, Lord. You are all that we need. You are everything to us, Lord God. And I'm thankful, God, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of fear trying to run our effort, God, you are still our joy. You are still our peace. And God, that joy, it's never ending because it's not of just a feeling that we have. It's a choice that we make to have joy. God, even when we don't understand, we choose joy today. And we declare joy over our lives, God. And we are thankful that your joy Your joy is not like anything else. Your joy is never ending.
home, your living room. Let the presence of God just sweep in. Jesus. No one like you, Lord. No one like you.
rejoice in him, magnify him, and thank him for this beautiful and wonderful experience that we have. My, what a great job you all have done leading us into the holies of holies, into the beautiful presence of Almighty God. I'm so glad that all of you are tuned in with us. I'm so glad that all of you have come to church with us. I know we may be doing it in just a little bit different fashion today, but I'm glad you're here. And I'm thankful for what God has already done and what God is going to do. I truly miss you. I miss all of you very bad. Angie and I and Chase are looking forward to the day that we are able to meet back in this house. I do want to have a little bit of good news. If weather permitting, uh, we will be having service here at church Wednesday night in the pavilion. And so you can come and be a part of our Wednesday night service here on the grounds. Uh, it will be outside in the pavilion at seven o'clock we will have chairs but if you would like to bring your lawn chair you may do so uh, for that too we're going to have a great time wednesday night uh, i'm so glad that all of you have come and i'm glad that all of you have tuned in we're starting an, an incredible series on i declare and the more and more i am studying and the more and more that i am looking into god's word I am really realizing, if you didn't know, I had a birthday last week, and thank you to all of you that text me and all of you that sent me messages, sent me gifts. Thank you so very much. But in my short, short 53 years of being here on earth, I am realizing the power of our words. The power. Of our words. I pray that you would stay tuned in for this whole message. I'm not going to be long today, but I do believe I've got a word for the Lord. My message this morning is going to be I declare one moment. I declare one moment. You may be seated. What is a declaration and where does the power come from? A declaration is an act of declaring or confidently stating something. The, set, the source of the power of a declaration comes from the word of God mixed with our faith. We act like the word cannot be used outside this building. And I don't know why we do that. We, we act like uh, the only time uh, that we can speak faith or the only time we can speak healing uh, is when we're in the house. Uh, can I tell you today uh, that faith uh, needs to be something we speak 24-7. Uh, uh, faith needs to be something uh, that we declare. Uh, we can declare uh, God's word uh, outside uh, of this building. Uh, but what we need to do uh, is we really need to replace our complaining with faith declarations. Our first response should always be a faith response. Sometimes things turn out the very way we have given the authority for it to turn out because we are not paying attention to what you and I are saying. We don't pay attention to our first response. We don't pay attention to the authority that we have been given to us. And as a Christian, we ought to speak with the authority that God has given us. Nothing, nothing can happen in the spirit world until you and I open up our mouths. We've got to open up our mouths and we've got to speak. We access that power when we speak God's 
word. The word of God is the language of God. It is the way we communicate with him. God's spoken word is so powerful. You've got to get this. God's spoken word is so powerful and it is our weapon. My Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 says, Behold, I have given unto you power uh, to tread upon serpents uh, and upon scorpions uh, and over all the power uh, of the enemy. Uh, and nothing shall uh, by any means uh, hurt you. Uh, this passage of scripture uh, mentions the word power twice. Uh, the first power uh, is authority. Uh, the second power uh, is ability. Uh, can I tell you? We have the authority over all of the ability of the enemy. The Amplified Version says it this way. Listen closely. I have given you authority that you now possess. Everybody say now possess. To tread on serpents and on scorpions and the ability to exercise authority. Did you get that? To exercise authority over all the power of the enemy, which we know is Satan, and nothing will in any way harm you. We have authority over the abilities of the devil. God's word breaks through spiritual atmospheres and can come against any force of the enemy. As you and I read and meditate and proclaim and declare God's word, our faith is increased. I'm going to say that again because I feel like that's where we're missing it. We're not speaking his word. We're not declaring his word. We're not standing on the promises of his word. We're going so negative and so critical and we automatically go to the glasses half empty instead of the glass being half full. But when we read and meditate and proclaim and declare God's word, our faith is increased. And we are able to declare the power and the authority. You see, Isaiah 55 and 10 says this. The rain and the snows comes down from heavens and stays on the ground to water it. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. It is the same with my word. I wish you would highlight that in your Bible. It is the same with my word. I send it out and it will always produce fruit. You know, no, it didn't say maybe. It didn't say there's a possibility. It didn't say just on good days. It didn't say just on days that it feels well. It says it will always produce fruit. It will accomplish. Look at that. It will accomplish all I want it to. And it will prosper everywhere. Son, I could do a little jig right here when I think of the power of the word of God. When I think that he's given us this word as a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Some of you need to quit speaking negative and you need to start speaking the word of God and see what God would do in your life. As long as you want to criticize, condemn, damn, and curse, and fuss, and gripe, and complain, and do all those things, then guess what? You're going to live where you're living. 
Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. But the moment you understand that the Word of God will accomplish all that it wants to, and it will produce, it will multiply, it will make come alive. Whoa, the power that is in the Word of God. God's Word always produces fruit and accomplishes all he wants it to. His word is full of examples where he spoke or rather declared and it came to pass. Did you know that he declared and the universe came into existence? He declared and the lepers were made whole. He declared and Lazarus rose from the ground. Do you know that he declared and the water turned into wine? Do you understand that he declared and the multitude was fed? Do you understand that he declared and the blind could see, the dumb could speak, and the deaf could hear, the cripple and the lame and the palsy and the bleeding were made whole? But listen to this. He has also declared... That you and I have received power. We have power in our words. If. If we are speaking God's word. You can have the same results as God when you speak God's word. But. You can't take care of heavenly things with earthly means if we're speaking negativity. We miss speaking God's word. We miss out on all of God's word when we speak negativity. You see, there are so many people that's saying, God, I want you to do this. God, I want you to do that. God, I need you to do this. God, I want you to heal this. But the only thing that's coming out of their mouth is negativity. The only thing that's coming out of their mouth is criticism. The only thing that is coming out of their mouth uh, is things that cannot grow. Uh, listen, uh, we're trying to get heavenly results uh, by speaking earthly means. As I said earlier, We've got to be careful with our first response. When something happens to us, then we say, oh, I knew that was going to happen. Oh, I just knew that was going to take place. I knew that was going to happen. No, we need to say, upon this rock, he's built my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You see, you've got to understand uh, what happens uh, is when we speak our first response. Uh, this morning, you can declare God's word over everything uh, you are facing uh, and then watch God turn it around. Uh, you may be having all kind of problems. Uh, you may be facing financial problems, uh, health problems, uh, marital problems, uh, and even family problems. Uh, you may be dealing with fear and confusion uh, and worries uh, and anxieties uh, and stress all caused uh, by COVID-19. Uh, may Maybe you are facing a situation uh, that you cannot see even your way through, uh, regardless uh, of what you're up against. Uh, I've come to declare today, uh, in one uh, single uh, moment, uh, God uh, can change everything uh, in your life. Oh, I wish you would believe it. I wish you'd stand up in your home. I wish you'd clap your hands. I wish you'd realize in one moment, God can change in all. In the time of Jesus' ministry here on earth, he had encounters after encounters with people where they were living. And friend, can I tell you, in one moment, Jesus changed everything. In one moment, a lifetime of hurt, pain, infirmity, and bondage can be turned around. The woman with the issue of blood, she spent 12 long 
years trying to find something that could heal her. Spent all of her money. Went to the best physicians. But can I tell you, in one moment, Jesus turned it all around. The ten lepers were healed in one moment. Jairus' daughter was raised from the dead in one moment. Blind Bartimaeus was healed and his identity was changed in one moment. They couldn't call him blind Bartimaeus anymore. After that one moment in his life, can I tell you, God is wanting to do a moment in your life right now. God is wanting to take the impossible and make it possible. He's here. Hey, legions of devils couldn't stop a man from running to Jesus and being set free in one moment. Jesus was all about creating moments for people and showing them just what he could do. Jesus had many encounters with people that needed him. But, but one man's faith, but just one man's faith really stood out to Jesus. Jesus declared healing and freedom over so many people. But this one incident, this man declared something back to Jesus. Look, look at this. Jesus declared that he hadn't witnessed anything like this man's faith in all of Israel. Matthew 8, I'm going to be reading from the NLT. Matthew 8 and 5. When Jesus returned to Capernaum, a Roman officer came and pleaded with him, Lord, my young servant layeth in bed, paralyzed and in terrible pain. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. But the officer said, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come into my house. But here's the key. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. Just say the word, Jesus. Just say the word where you are. Just declare that he's healed right where you are, and he'll be healed. For I know this because I am under the authority of my supervisor officer, and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say go, and they go, or come, and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do that. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. You need to underline that. He was amazed. Turning to those that followed him, he said, I tell you the truth. I have not seen faith like this in all of Israel. Then Jesus said to the Roman officer, Go back home because you believed it has happened. And the servant was healed that same hour. The Roman officer approached Jesus with an issue. His servant was dying. His servant was very sick. He tells Jesus about his servant. And Jesus immediately says, I'll come and I'll heal him. Look at this though. The Roman officer stops Jesus and says, you don't you don't have to come to my house. Just speak the word and my servant will be healed. The scripture says that Jesus was amazed when he heard this. 
Could it be that we could amaze Jesus when we have that much faith in our spoken word? If you would speak earthly language, you cannot receive heavenly benefits. Folks, the enemy wants you to stay speaking negative. The enemy wants you to stop speaking positive. He wants you to live with the glass half empty but oh I've come to tell you if we could be like the centurion that just says Lord say the word just declare it God if you'll just declare it everything will be okay but the enemy wants us to speak earthly language trying to get heavenly benefits some of you are so frustrated. Some of you want to pull your hair out. Some of you get so confused because you wonder why miracles aren't happening. Why God is not healing. Why God is not providing. What are you declaring? What are you speaking? Face with everything that the enemy throws at us. I just declare God's word over my life. Jesus, you speak it and I'll declare it over my life. If he said I'm healed, guess what? I'm healed. If he says I'm the head, guess what? I'm not the tail. Come on somebody. If he says I'm an overcomer, I'm not going to be defeated. Ooh, I, I need you here this morning because I got a word for you. You got to declare what you want to see in your life. Come on, quit speaking earthly language trying to get heavenly benefits. Quit speaking it. You got to start declaring it. I I declare it over my family. I declare it over everything that I'm facing. I declare this word over my mind. I declare this word over my heart. I declare this word over my family. I'm not, I'm not trying to get critical, but the reason why some of you, the first thing you go to is negative because you haven't taken time to put the word of God in you. The Bible says study to show thyself approved. The word of God says hide thy word in my heart. There's more of you uh, that got four letter words coming out than you got the word of God coming out. And then you wonder why uh, you're not reaping the fruit uh, of the word. You can't have the fruit uh, unless you declare the word of God. You've got to declare the word. You've got to declare it over your life, over your family's life, over your friend's life. Death was about to take over this man's servant. But you hear me, that officer knew that not even death was strong enough to come against God's word. Oh, I wish some of you would get to that place. Just speak it, Jesus. Just declare it, Jesus. What happens? What would happen today? What could happen today if we could get that same kind of faith? That same kind of faith that that Roman centurion had that day. I believe many doors would open. I believe many healings would take place. I believe that the supernatural would become the natural. I believe that God would do exceedingly abundantly above all. I truly believe that whatever we would ask, we would see. I believe that God would set us free. But see, you've got to declare his word. Isaiah, or rather, I'm sorry, Luke 1, 37. For the word of God will never fail. I hope you're not tuning out right now because I'm almost done. 
did you hear what his word said? His word said, I'll never fail. You, you know what our problem is? We're used to people failing us. We're used to friends failing us. And, and as bad as I hate to say this, we're used to family failing us. And so that's why our first response is normally on the negative side. But God is saying, hey, my word, my word will never fail. Why don't you quit putting earthly things in? And why don't you start putting heavenly things in? Quit building up treasures here on earth where moth and rust can corrupt and thieves can break through and steal. But rather lay up treasures in heaven. How do I lay up treasures in heaven? Thanks for asking. Uh, by getting into this word. Uh, by studying this word. Uh, by knowing what this word says. Uh, you see, uh, the enemy uh, wants to get you busy. Uh, wants to get you preoccupied. Uh, wants to get you doing something else. Uh, to cause you not to read the word. Because he knows uh, the very moment uh, you can quote this word, uh, he's in a disadvantage. Uh, the very moment uh, you can begin to declare uh, this word, uh, I am healed. Uh, pain uh, has got to leave your body. Uh, the moment you declare, uh, I am set free. Uh, chains uh, have got to break uh, and fall off of you. It's all about declaring the word. I said the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. I know I'm running out of time, but you need to underline that in your Bibles, Luke 1 and 37. For the word of God will never fail. It will never fail. If you are facing financial issues, and no doubt some are, but I've come to tell you, you've got to declare the word of God over your life. You cannot live in fear. You cannot ring, live wringing your hands out. You cannot worry about what's coming tomorrow. You've got to declare God's word. For Philippians 4 and 19 says, And the same God who took care of me will supply all of your needs from his glorious riches. I'm talking about a God who's rich, who's great, who's mighty. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. His bank account never runs out. He's never short. He's never empty. But we got to declare the word which have been given to us. In Christ Jesus. Come on, if you're struggling financially, get out Psalms 37 and 25. Once I was young, I'm glad I still fall under that category. And some are old, yet I have never seen the godly abandoned or their children begging for bread. It didn't happen then, and it ain't going to happen now. But I've got to declare, he's my father. He has my bank account. He owns my future. He takes my next step with me. I've got to declare it. If you're facing a situation in your body where you need to be healed, where you need to be set free, are you tired of the pain? Are you tired of the suffering? Then declare God's word over your life. Isaiah 53 and 5. But he was wounded for our transgression. Come on, somebody. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. But with his stripes, it's not a possibility. It's not a maybe. He said, but with his stripes, if you declare it, you are healed. Psalms 103, 2 and 3. That all that I am, praise the Lord. Can you praise God in the middle of COVID-19? 
Can you praise God when you don't know when the next check's coming in? Can you praise God when you don't know really what tomorrow holds? Can you praise God even in the midst of torment and situation? I've come to tell you, I've got to praise the Lord. Let all that I am I never forget the good things that he's done for me. <laughs> he forgiveth all of my sin. And guess what? Heal it. Heal it. Heal it. Heal it. Oh, my disease. Not a partial. Not just a little bit. Oh. Let. Let all that I am. I've got to praise you. Listen to your pastor. Because I don't know if they're watching me. I don't know if they're eating cereal or eating bomb bomb balls. But what I can tell you is you better hear me. Where you are right now. Let everything that is in you. some depression, some anxiety, and some fear. Can I help you with it? But you got to declare his word. Because you see, John 8, 36 says, So if the Son, so if the Son sets you free, why do I need to stay in bondage? Why do I need to be a slave? Why do I need to have to wake up and say, is it going to happen today? I know it's going to happen today because I'm a child of the king. His royal blood. Come on. Come on, it's up to you. If the son has set you free, you got to declare. But pastor, I don't have a job. Do you understand in one moment God can give you a job? Jennifer, one day I was sitting in my living room in Alexandria reading a plaque saying, Be still and know I'm God, and I'm wanting to rip it off the wall. So I was tired of being still. And the next moment, I'm pastoring the greatest church in America. In one moment. In one moment. You're saying God can't give you a job? Really? You're speaking earthly? wanting heavenly. I'm getting a job tomorrow. Come on. I'm getting a job tomorrow. God's going to supply my needs tomorrow. Look at what 2 Timothy 1 and 7. I, I, I know I'm over time. You still got me on the live feed? All right. For God has not given us, for God has not given us the spirit of you know what fear comes from? The devil. From the enemy. From speaking earthly. I gotta hurry. I, 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 might, I might pick this up Wednesday night. But he said, but of power and love and a sound mind. There really is nothing that you are facing right now that can't be destroyed in your life. Do you hear me? God's here to destroy it. God's here to break it. I wish a centurion would rise up in this house. I wish somebody that had some faith would come forth and say, God, all you got to do is speak.
time to declare your healing. It's time to declare that your bondages be broken. It's time for you to declare the miracle in your life. It's time for you to declare a breakthrough in your life right now. Listen, you will never get heavenly benefits speaking earthly language. And that's been our problem. We're wanting heavenly benefits, Michael. Speak in earthly language. And we'll never get it. We can't have it. Because that's not the way God works. The satirian said, Amber, you just don't speak the word. And if you'll speak it, he'll be healed. Listen, you may be in your home right now. But God's getting ready to speak the word to you. And you are getting ready to be healed. You're getting ready to be set free. You're getting ready to be delivered. Chains are getting ready to fall off. God is dropping a check in the mail to you. God is going to supply you. is a word to your spirit. I declare in one moment. I want you to go this week. And when your first response wants to be negative, I want you to quote a word. I want you to quote a scripture. I want you to declare God's word. That's why you've got to be in his word every day. Every day you've got to study to show yourself a I'm going to see you back here Wednesday night. We're going to have a wonderful time. For our elders, for our seniors, we will have golf carts in the parking lot that will be bringing you up to the pavilion. Uh, we hopefully, we will have face masks by then. We will have them by Sunday, but we'll hopefully we'll have them by then. We'll have gloves. We will have our chairs six foot apart. We will do our best to do our social distancing, but we're going to allow God to fill in the gap. Come on, somebody. We're going to let God fill in the gap. And we're going to see God do some wonderful things. I'll see you Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here on the church drive. God bless you. You're dismissed in the lovely name of the Lord. I declare freedom for my daughters. I declare freedom for my sons. I declare